Hello, Isam. Good morning. Good morning, teacher. How are you? Good. How's it going with you? Did you have a good morning so far? Yes, I just get up uh, before 10 months. Oh, 10 minutes ago you got up? Yes. <laughs> Are you having a cappuccino? <laughs> yes, exactly. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I just I finished mine already. Oh. Mm. Do you, uh, you don't uh, drink coffee like me? I do, I do. I had uh, I mix my cappuccino with a bit of coffee, make it a bit stronger, you know. Yeah. But I have I have coffee as well. Yeah. I can't drink coffee because when I'm drinking coffee, I feel so sad and I I'm not good. Really, you don't feel good when you have coffee. It doesn't yeah. give you a kick or boost. Yeah, I don't know. It is psychology like it is like this, you know. Hmm, psychological. It doesn't make you feel good. Oh, Psychologically, yes. I can't uh, drink like uh, Coca Cola because there is coffee in, in, inside. Mm. I can't drink Red Bull because there is coffee inside. Mm. When I drink this, uh, my 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 head uh, have headache. Wow, that's yeah. strange. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. You better stay away from it then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, usually with uh, people, it gives them a boost. You know, when they have. Um, Coffee or you know, when Coca Cola. When I am going to the coffee, I say I want anything decaf. I see decaf. Yeah, you like to decaf. have decaf. Yes, decaf. Mm, that's good. Okay, well, it's good to know that. <coughs> okay, some uh, welcome others. Cecilia, welcome back. Servet, welcome back. Yes. And uh, Geni, welcome back. Nice to see you again. Uh, hello, teacher. Nice to see you again. Hi, everyone. Hello. Excellent. Um, ha have you guys met Geni before? Yeah. Yeah, I think, Evgeny, uh, you've been with us before. Cecilia and Servet and Isam, do you know? Yes, uh, Geni, yes. yes. I, I know Geni. He was mm -hmm. with me, my class a lot of time. Okay, that's good, that's good. Hi, Ingeni. Awesome. Hi, Sam. Awesome, guys. Um, all right, uh, let's get moving, get straight into the class, shall we? Uh, this time, we are, our topic is history and culture, and we have an interesting article I want to discuss. And uh, before we do that, I'd like to, you know, touch on this pronunciation. Uh, which I think most of you already know. I mean, uh, but it's just um, to highlight it before we move on. Uh, it's got to do with, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the vowels in many and any, and much and some. Okay, so these vowels, we're gonna go through them briefly, and um, they're they're quite relaxed vowels. Mm. And they're, they're very short when you're pronouncing these, these words. And um, so when we, let's have a look. I'll give you an example, and I want you to read it for me, please. Uh, so, Isam, maybe you want to start. Can you read that sentence, please? Uh, I don't know many people who like reggae music. Yeah, reggae music. Reggae music. Excellent. Excellent. Genny, do you want to read the sentence, please? Mm -hmm. I don't know many people who like reggae music. Excellent. Well done. Now, okay, one sec. What about this one? Servet, do you want to read this one? Joe was hoping to win some money at bingo. Yes, Cecilia. Well done, Sarah. Joe was hoping. Joe was hoping to win some money at bingo. Hmm. Well done, Gany. Do you want to read this one? Joe was hoping to win some money at bingo. Excellent, Isam. Joe was hoping uh, to my, uh, to win money uh, to win some money at bingo. Excellent. And Isam, read the next one. 
How much does this cost? Yes, Vienny? Uh, how much does it cost? Excellent. Cecilia? How much does this cost? Yes, and Servet? How much does this cost? Excellent. Good intonation. Well done, Servet. And the next one, Servet. She doesn't have any car insurance. Mm -hmm. Cecilia? She doesn't have any car insurance. Yes. Jenny? She doesn't have any car insurance. Well done. She and doesn't some? have any car insurance. Excellent. Now, I hope you guys can, I mean, all of you have read it perfectly. Um, I just want you to um, <clears throat> understand that the vowel, uh, there's a vowel distinction between saying much and many. Much and many. Okay? There's a ah and eh. Okay? Much, many. Many, any, yes? And uh, what else do we have? Yeah, those two. And some. Some, much are the same. Okay? And uh, especially here in, in the, sorry, in the second sentence, Joe was hoping to win some money. Some money. Sometimes because of the O, uh, learners, they tend to say money. Money. You know, especially perhaps the Spanish-speaking, um, you know, learners, they might say money, but it's actually some money. Some also has an O, but the, the pronunciation of the vowel is a, uh, so some, some money. Okay? Same with much. Uh, how much does this cost? Not some, uh, how much. How much. It's how much. And uh, she doesn't have, not any, but any. Okay? She doesn't have any car insurance. So all of you have pronounced it well. I just wanted to make that distinction uh, and make sure that all of you are on the same page and don't make that mistake because learners do tend to mix them up. Uh, because in certain languages, the letter A is pronounced how it's written, like I know in German and perhaps in, in, in Spanish as well. Uh, you read it how it's written. So A is A, A is A, you know, E is E. Uh, even though in English it's, it, it can vary from uh, words. <clears throat> so I'm glad that's done and uh, dealt with. Um, let me see if I can okay, get you guys to focus a bit on the grammar, and, um, which is plurals and quantifiers. So I'll ask you a question and try to use plurals and quantifiers if you can. All right, so how much money do you have in your wallet? So you don't have to give me an exact <laughs> number. Maybe you don't have your wallet on you. But what would you say? How much money do you have in your, in your wallet or in your purse in the case of Cecilia? I have some money in my wallet. Mm -hmm. I have some money in my wallet, yeah, okay. I have much money in my wallet. I have much money in my wallet. Mm -hmm. What do you think, guys? Is there another way we can say that? I have a lot of money in my wallet. Yeah, this is the more accurate way of saying it. So I have a lot of money in my wallet. Now, if you want to say the negative of that, you could say, I don't have much money in my wallet. Okay, some. I don't, I don't have much money in my wallet? Yeah, yeah. if you want to say the opposite of what mm -hmm. Jenny said, then you say, I don't have much money in my wallet. My wallet. But if you want to say the positive, as in you have a lot, uh, mm -hmm. it's better to say, I have a lot of money in my wallet. Mm -hmm. Not, I you have much money. Still, you still ha can say, I have got pretty much, no? Mm, not necessarily, no. No? No, you can't. If you want to actually express that you have an abundant amount of money in your purse or wallet, you can't really say much. I have much money. No. You have to say, I have a lot. Ah. But meaning uh, not, not some and not a lot, like in the middle. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, like Servet, I think Servet said that I, I have some money in my wallet, but not much, okay. you can say. I have okay. some money in my wallet, but not much. Okay, that's it. I've Excellent. got some money in my wallet, but not much, because mm. I have to uh, buy a book today. Yes. In my purse, not in my wallet. Your in purse. my purse, sorry. <laughs> yes. In my purse. In my purple purse. In your pink one. P purple, pur purple. Purple? Purple. Is it really purple? Yes, it's purple. Oh, yes, yeah. oh cool. <laughs> nice. Um, okay, what else could we say? Can you think of another, another way of saying it? I don't have any money in the wallet. Ah, excellent. Well done, Kenny. So we use any if it's a negative. Yeah? So I don't have any money. So you can't say I, I don't have uh, some money, right? I don't have any money. Well done. I now, have another little one. Money, maybe. Sorry? I have little money. I have little. Uh, yeah, I have little money. I have uh, no money at all. Yeah, that's when you don't have anything. I have no money in my purse at all. Excellent, well done. Now, how many people live in your city? A lot of people live in New York City. Yep, excellent. So many people are living, or so many people live in my city. Mm -hmm. Okay. Too many. Too many, you could say also, yeah. Too many, as in there's an overload, an abundant amount of people. Okay, what else could you say? They, uh, they have, they don't have, they don't have any people in my country, in my city. Okay, so oh. if you want to say negatively, mm, you want to say yeah. that there's nobody there or there's a small amount? Nobody. Okay, so how would you say that? Uh, uh, there is anybody in my, in my city? There isn't. Isn't anybody. Yeah. anybody. Or, yeah. or you could say there are no people living in my city. Yeah? Is there another way you can say it in, in a negative form, guys? May I say, uh, uh, yeah. there is no one around yeah. the neighborhood. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, There is no one around or there is no one about in my neighborhood or in my town, um, you know. Yes. Usually, I mean, it doesn't really make sense, but we just send these negative sentences for the case of, uh, you know, our, our discussion and grammar. That's good. Okay. What else could you say? My city is scarcely inhabited. Okay. My, my city is currently inhabited. Okay. But you still need to give me are you, you you're saying it's uninhabited or inhabited? Inhabited, not scarcely, not, not scarcely. Ah, I see, I see. Okay, I understand. Yeah, you can say that. Mhm. Mm Any other Har ideas? Hardly, hardly anyone live in my city. Yes, good. Hardly anyone lives in my city. Good one. I like that as well. Excellent. Anything else? What about if it's medium? Some people. Some people live in my city. Mm -hmm. A few people. Few people live in my city. Yeah, a few is more minimal. Uh, a minimal amount. Minimal. Okay. Um, not a lot of people live in my city. Okay, not, you can say that. Not, not, many, not, not many people live in my city. Yeah, that's better. Not many people do live in my city. 
Do not believe me. Yeah, you can say do live or live. So not many people live in my city. Mm -hmm. We so, do with with emphasis, no? Yeah, you, you put more emphasis when you say uh, if somebody's asking you, so how many people do live in your city? Well, not many people do live in my city. You, know, you can mm -hmm. put more emphasis to the living, you know? Yeah. Excellent. So there are many ways we can we can say this, right? So we have a it's quite a wide, uh, you know, ocean of you know words or that you can uh, select. And uh, now we're going to go into the actual <coughs> grammar part of this. Uh, we're going to touch on and see how we can use these quantifies, multipliers. So. All right, here we go. So first you should learn the, irre the irregular pools. Uh, hello, Alfonso, can you hear me? Yes, do you hear me now? Oh, uh, yes, I can hear you. That's good. That's excellent. Because finally, finally yeah. all this. Welcome. Welcome to class. Thank you. You're welcome. OK, I've just started to talk about the grammar, uh, you know, which uh, we are focusing on uh, plurals and quantifiers. So uh, let's just briefly go through this and understand in detail. So we need to understand irregular plurals, first of all. OK, there are some nouns that you don't add an S or ES, OK, to pluralize. So some are completely irregular. For example, we have man, one man, two men. And the way you pronounce it also, man is prolonged, men is shortened, yeah? The vowel is shortened. One woman, two women. Woman, two women, all right? And uh, there's no S added here, they're all irregular. So one person, two people, okay? One child, two children. So these are irregular. Um, so with some, you change the vowel sound to E, to the E sound. For example, we have tooth, one tooth. More, we have teeth, OK, two teeth. So from double O, it changes to double E. Foot, yeah, becomes two feet. Goose, one goose, becomes two geese, OK? So there are different types of um, uh, plurals, you know? Uh, then there are others where you change the sound to form uh, um, from F to V-E-S. So one life becomes two lives. Lives, not lives, but lives. Okay, one wife, two wives, one knife, two knives. Okay, so the F will change to V E S. And other nouns don't change in the plural, they just remain the same. So, dear will remain dear. So, one dear, two dear. One sheep, two sheep. Okay, one fish, two fish. Okay, so there are certain uh, plurals which they remain the same. Okay. Uh, secondly, uh, you can use many, much, and a lot of. Okay, so many is for count nouns. So remember this now. Pay attention. Many we use for count nouns. Much is for non-count. Right. So for countable nouns, like. Uh, banana, there's one banana, two bananas, three bananas, okay? Much is used for non-countable nouns, like water. Okay, you can't say, can I have two waters? No, you cannot count it. And a lot of is for both. So a lot of we can use for both in, in different uh, circumstances and contexts. So let's have a look at some examples. There are many cars. Why many? Why can't we say much cars, guys? 
countable. Yeah, because cars are countable. One car, two cars, they're countable. So we use many. There are many cars, not much car, cars. So many houses, too many people. Yeah, like when I ask you how many people live in your city, you can say too many people live in my city. Okay? And now we have much, too much water, too much ice, so much food. Okay, food, ice, and water are all non countable nouns. And uh, you don't say there is much water or much ice, etc. Okay. So there are a lot of cars and a lot of water. Okay, there is a lot of water and there are a lot of cars. Okay, so there is a lot of water and there are a lot of cars. And we don't uh, note too many or too much is for problems. So much and a lot of uh, casual ways to say very. Okay, so I uh, say so too much or too many. You can use it for problems. I've got uh, too many problems, uh, you know, in my life. Okay. okay. So thirdly, you can use some and any. So these words both mean an uh, unstated small number. Okay, so how we use them is different. Some is usually used when the feeling is positive or neutral. So some we use when the feeling is positive or neutral. So I caught some fish today. So it's good news, right? I had some good luck. So we don't say I had any good luck. I had some good luck. And any is usually used in negative sentences. So I didn't catch any fish. Notice here is a negative. I did not catch any fish. So we can't say I didn't catch some fish. We say I didn't catch any fish. Have you seen any good movies lately? So what's happening here? There's no negative. Why are we using any? Can anyone notice? I haven't seen any any movie late uh, before. Yeah, excellent. You can say that. Yeah. But in this one here that I've highlighted, it's a question. It's not a negative sentence. It's just a question. So any is also used to make a polite request by making it sound less strong, right? So here's a question. Have you seen any good movies lately? It's just a question. Okay. Or can I get you anything? This is a polite request. Okay. Would you like any milk with your tea? So when you uh, when usually the waiter at a restaurant is, is offering or or uh, you know requesting, uh, uh, you know making a request, or you are making a request even to the waiter, can I get you know uh, any milk with my tea, please? Yeah. Not some. And fourthly. You can pluralize some non-countable nouns. So let's have a look. Some non-countable nouns mean almost the same as a countable noun. So coffee, water, hair. So you, you say, I want two coffees. Ideally, coffee is non-countable. But in, in, this, in certain cases, you can't say two coffees. So it actually means, I want two cups of coffee. This is the grammatically correct way of saying it. I want two cups of coffee. OK, but in this, there's an exception in certain non-countable nouns. This is one of them. And pluralize non-countable nouns to describe totally different types of, of them. So juice, metals, etc. So smoking, smoking can cause harm versus the many harms of smoking. Okay, many harms. The many harms of smoking. Uh, and two pieces of candy versus the store has a number of different candies. Okay, this is also a non countable noun, but we can pluralize it. Okay, in this case, because we're saying the store has many uh, has a number of different candies. 
Then we have three kinds of plastic. So three kinds of plastic versus the company makes 1,000 different plastics. So plastics here, yeah, or plastic is a non-countable noun. But in this case, in this context, you can pluralize it and add the S. The company makes 1,000 different plastics. Or you could say the company makes 1,000 different kinds of plastic or different types of plastic. And most, uh, most non-countable nouns are never pluralized like information, equipment, and jewelry, and so on. So we don't say informations or equipments or jewelries. No, we just keep it like this. So information, equipment, jewelry, stays like that. All right? Well, have any questions? All right. So let's see who wants to give me a. Uh, let's go through some of these. Let's start from the top. Okay. Somebody give me a, a, a sentence using many. Who wants mm. to try and give me a many? sentence using many? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, how many languages can you, uh, do you know? Yeah, that's good. It's a question. How many languages do you know? Excellent. Many languages because many, uh, sorry, language is, is countable. It's a countable noun. So I know two languages, or I know three or four. Okay, anyone else? Yeah, Alfonso, uh, we can't hear you. Your microphone is muted, I think. We still can't hear you. You have to press the, the mute microphone at the top. Ah, okay. and, Yes, that's better. Yeah, we can hear you now. How many English friends do you have? Excellent. Yes. How many English <laughs> friends do you have? I have 10 English speaking French friends. Yes. Excellent. Okay, anyone else want to try? There's no many students in this class. Yeah, yeah. Or well, there aren't uh, many students. Yeah, there aren't many students because the students plural. So there aren't many students in this class. Well done, Kenny. Okay, what about much? Who wants to try giving give me a sentence with much? Um, uh, question. Me? Can I try? Please go ahead, son. Uh, please give me uh, not can not be much. Uh, how much? Uh, Money do you have? Yes, good. That question from earlier. Yeah. How much money do you have? Nice. Anyone else? Don't be shy, guys. It's okay. If you make a mistake. It's good. You're learning. Servet, please give us one. Give us uh, a sentence or question using much. Supported Obama in the last election. Sorry, I didn't catch the beginning. It was a little bit disturbing. Many people mm -hmm. supported Obama in the last election. Action, good. That's good. Using many. Yep. What about much? What if you want to use much? Say that. Much of the support. Went to Obama. Excellent. Support. Much of the support. Or what else could you use instead of much? A lot of. Yeah, excellent. A lot of support went to Obama. Perfect. I love it. All right. What about using some and any? 
So let's see. Who wants to try using some and any? Give me a sentence using some. Me. And then any. Yes? Some. Um, I have some people in my house. Yeah. Uh, or, I, or I, I have somebody or someone in my house, yeah. Yes, I don't have any money in my wallet. Perfect. And why do we use any here, Isam? Why do you say? Because uh, you cannot uh, not countable money. Yes. Because yes. I use it something not countable. That's good. And also, it's a negative. So you said I don't have. Negative. Yes. Yes. Negative. yes. So I said negative. It's going to be any. I don't have any money in my wallet. Perfect. Well done, Isam. Anyone else? Uh, do you want any milk with coffee? Yes. Nice. It's a request. It's a polite request. So you're yeah, you're asking, do, do you want any uh, milk with your coffee? Mm -hmm. What about some, Gary? How would you use some? I have some plans for today. Yeah, excellent. I have some plans for today. Or I have something planned. Yeah, I have something planned for today. You can also say that. Something planned? Yeah, I have something, something planned. planned. Yeah, I have something planned for today. Oh, planned, okay. Yeah, that's good to say as well. So if you wanted to use any in this in this context on this sentence, you say I don't have anything planned. So you can't say I have anything planned today. If you want to use anything, you have it has to be a negative or a question. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I don't have anything planned, or do you have anything planned for today? Excellent. Some of the vegetables are going out of season. Yes, nice. Some of the vegetables are going out of season. Perfect. Yes. So we know now that some is usually used for positive or neutral feeling. Yeah? And any we use for a negative sentence, or if it's like a question, yeah, or even polite request. Hold on. And then towards the end we had um, we can pluralize some non-countable nouns. So you can easily say I want two coffees um, instead of saying I want two cups of coffee. And. Uh, the, the many harms of smoking and so on. Okay. All right, guys, well done. So you're all on par, which is good. Do you want to ask me anything before I move on to the article? In, as anything a, which you might use, use much. Does it have a different meaning? Like, I love you so much. I work out so much. In this case, we use much. Is it more than a lot? less than very the degree is the same or different? Ah, you mean in this degree yeah, mm, yeah if you're expressing something uh, like that you, you say I love you a lot I love you so much mm. uh, obviously you're expressing it and it's it's to a high degree now whether it's more or less than a lot, uh, you can't really tell. Both are basically okay. high. It's more than more than normal, right? Mm -hmm. If you say I love you, it's 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 standard, right? You're expressing yeah. your love. But if you if you say I love you so much, it's above that, you know. Yeah. Or I love you a lot, it's also above that. So it falls into the same category, I believe, as you know. Okay, okay got it. Okay. Okay, that's good. So here is the. I hate these commercials, these advertisements. Okay. All right, so here's the ad blocker. You yeah, know? Uh, ad blocker. I should use that. Yeah. Is it like a um, program you download or a plugin? A plugin browser. Is plugin. it a plugin for? 
for Google Chrome. Mm. If you say Ad Blocker, for Google, is it in the settings? Plus. If you write to Google Ad Block Plus Chrome, it will. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I'll Google it. Yeah, I'll do that later on. Hopefully, all these silly ads will disappear. Okay, well, I can see that. All right, so let's see what do we got here. I'll put the link in the chat so you can open it yourself if you like. Um, we're talking about jeans, right? The history and popularity of great clothes. So I don't know if you guys actually know how jeans started off. Does anyone know? You know the culture behind jeans, yes, Cecilia? I don't know. You're not sure of getting? You never heard about it? The uh, history about it? No, I guess not. That's good. You're going to find out now. OK. Cecilia, you want to say something, or should I just continue? OK, you tell us briefly. What I, what I learned was that yeah. it was with the pioneers in the United States. They took the deming from the wagons, and they created their own trousers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Let's see what this article says. Okay. So jeans have become one of the most worn, worn pieces of clothing in the world. Everybody wears them from the rural farmer to the urban lawyer and from models to housewives. But why have jeans become so popular? You'll get many answers. For some people, they look cool. For others, jeans are simply comfortable. And try to also focus on, on the, uh, you know, on their uh, quantifiers and, and uh, you know, plurals. So you have, you have some here, then you have many and so on. Uh, so, yeah, for some people they look cool, for other jeans they're simply comfortable. Jeans were first designed as durable trousers for farm workers and miners in the states of the American West. A Nevada tailor, Jacob Davis, had the idea of using copper bolts at the corner of the pockets to make them stronger. They became popular instantly, and soon many people bought them. Although Davis knew that he had a great product which many people wanted to buy, he didn't have the money to patent it. He asked Levi Strauss, who supplied him with cloth, and help, uh, to help him out. The two worked together and started making jeans out of denim, which was more comfortable and could be easily stretched. It also became softer as it got older. They were dyed uh, with indigo because it, it did not go through the cloth like other dyes do. Hmm. At first, jeans were worn only by workers, especially in factories. <clears throat> in the eastern part of the US, jeans were hardly worn at all. So this is like New York and that area. They were associated with the rural, uh, rural people and the working class. But when rich Easterners went on holidays to escape everyday life, they often put on jeans. James Dean and Marlon Brando made them popular in movies, and everyone was wear them. Jeans became a symbol of the youth rebellion during the 1950s and 1960s. College students started to wear them as a protest against the Vietnam War and the establishment. The new trousers were banned in America, American schools and sometimes in theaters and cinemas. As time went on, jeans became more acceptable, and today they are worn not only as casual clothes, but also, also uh, at formal events. Other countries quickly started to get accustomed to wearing jeans too. American servicemen on duty in Europe and Japan often wore them when they were not on duty to show that they were Americans. The trousers showed the world a happier way of life, some, uh, something that people needed, especially after what they had endured in World War II. Jeans were also worn because they made people equal. You could afford them and they couldn't be torn so easily. But they had practical advantages as well. They didn't need to be washed as often as other trousers and women didn't need to iron them. 
this became more important as more and more women started working and had less time for housework. Today, jeans are an essential part of our lives. They are almost always washed a few times before, buying, uh, before being sold to give them their faded appearance. So they go. There they are. The world famous denim jeans. The blue jeans. So at the bottom we have some vocabulary if you were not um, acquainted with these already. You can have a look at them. The meanings. So yeah. Are there any questions? So Evgeny, are you surprised? Uh, yes, a bit. Yeah, it's quite interesting. I, I heard about this. I knew about it before. I know it started all back in America. And uh, Levi, Levi Strauss, you know, the Levi's are very popular jeans, and this is why because he actually was behind the beginning of you know all of this. He uh, you know invested his, his money in that. So yeah, very interesting. You know, as we can see, it was mainly used in, in Western um, and rural. Uh, America, uh, United States of America, and usually farmers used to use them, and slaves, you know, the you know, the, the black slaves used to use them a lot. But then it became a trend. I think everywhere okay. they used jeans, you know, in Europe, in Asia. Yeah, now it's become a trend. It's fashion, and uh, but before, like in the 50s and 60s, um, you know, it wasn't as common. Whoever uh, was no, wearing no, jeans, no, yeah, no. usually <laughs> Americans w w would like to wear or w wore them to express their nationality, you know, so that, that they're American. Mm. So, are there any questions? No. All right. So let's let's get cracking and start using our lovely grammar skill we've just mastered. So so what styles of genes are there? Now, not, you don't have to refer to the article itself, but um, according to your knowledge, what styles or types of genes are there? There is style trousers and skirt and uh, socks, jeans, like Coat, the jeans and dress mm -hmm. jeans. Yeah, a lot so of kind because I am designer. I can do a lot of kind of things. Ah, yeah, you should know <laughs> you're a designer, fashion yeah. designer. So excellent. So, like you said, there are a lot of uh, different kinds and styles, right? Of yes. jeans. Yeah, excellent. What else can we say? Uh, what Quantifier can we use in particular? Or what tools? Without war, warring, warring. There are many kind of jeans or them in mm. use for making jeans. Yeah, there are many types of jeans. So we don't only have jeans. I mean, we can even talk about denim, uh, you know, skirts even. You know, shorts. Yes. yes. Not only uh, only trousers or jeans to wear at the bottom, but even jackets. And then in jackets. Jackets. Yeah. Yes. But when you say jeans, you straight away think about your you know your bottom that you're wearing for your legs. Right? Yes. So um. Yes. But they've, they've, they've used it. Yeah, they've used it for everything for jackets, for even uh, shirts. Uh, yes. Even bags, ladies' bags. handbags, absolutely, and yeah. wallets, wallets. Yeah. Uh, pencil cases. Yes. Uh, you think you name it. Anything's, uh, anything you can fit something inside, or you can clothe, clothe anything that you know, is part of our body. Now, okay, another one. Are jeans limited to a few colors? Mm, yes, can be a, a, a few colors. Yes. So, is there a limit? Uh, a lot no, of colors. Unlimited. It's not only blue. Mm. 
can be a lot of colors. Yeah, excellent. So there are a lot of different colors. There are many colors, right? Excellent. Many colors, exactly. So where do you name it? I mean, from green to red to bright orange, you know? You can make it any kind of color do you like. Yes, because I use dye. I think a certain special dye and then a dye in a different color. Yes. Yeah. Now, okay, what can you say to this? Who makes the best genes? Uh, Think about in, the quantifiers. In uh, USA, uh, diesel, diesel, diesel is the most important, uh, the most, uh, the best uh, genes in the world, I think, in the world. Mm -hmm. Or you can say diesel is the uh, most known, or most, uh, yeah, well known mm -hmm. um, genes manufacturer, or you know. There are uh, um, another mark is uh, mark is American type like uh, I can't remember the, the this device device I can't remember the name Levi's Levi's yes yes yeah that's a gentleman that we actually started it off mm -hmm. Levi his name actually is Levi Strauss yeah Levi Strauss I think uh, yeah so what else can you say Try to give me an answer using a, a quantifier. There is many kind of gen, of companies. They made uh, they made yeah. the best genes. <laughs> yeah, they make good genes. Yeah, or good least, genes. Yeah. Good genes. Yes. But remember, when you start, you say there are many. Yeah. There are there are, there are many. many companies uh, that make. Great genes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, what about you yourself? Tell us about what genes you own. Servet, do you own any genes? Yes, I have a few. You have uh, a few? Just classical blue genes. Uh, there's nothing mm. special so about them. You don't have that many, yeah? I had two or three genes, and they are all blue and classic type. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's nothing special or different about them. Mm -hmm. Classical blue genes. I know, I know in Turkey they love their genes as well, and they have really good quality there. Um, they love their brands and uh, their, their good marks, isn't it? Yes, there are a few good brands, uh, there are foreign brands as well. It's mm. they, they are popular here. Yeah, because uh, I know uh, when I was in Germany, it was very popular, very famous, and we love jeans like Lee, you know, Lee and Levi's and yes. uh, Diesel, and um, yeah, in Germany it was very very famous, and a lot of the Turkish, uh, you know. People that lived in Germany, they wore jeans, and I used to always have friends who loved their jeans, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I mean, yeah. The last day here in Athens, only Turkish uh, kind, only Turkish, mid end Turkish uh, clothes here in Athens. Yes, yes. Yeah, Turkey is involved in the, in the clothing industry quite heavily, I believe, yeah. Very, very good uh, uh, kind of clothes. Material. They Yes, Very good I like. Material. Yes, I have many clothes from Turkey, made in Turkey. Mm. Okay, all right then. So one more: Is wearing jeans acceptable in every culture and workplace? I guess not in every workplace. In in uh, if you have more higher positions, probably you. You will be expected to wear suits or more classical yes. things. Mm. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, anyone else wants to add? I think yes, it is and not is is acceptable sometimes, you know. If you want to go to the office or culture you can wear jeans, why not? 
if you want to go to the, any party or uh, no. you can war you can war gens i think restaurant the hotel you can war yeah so you can say in uh, in most cultures yeah it's in most cultures. it's acceptable i don't i can't think of a culture where you know jeans is not acceptable uh, depends maybe if you're a Buddhist Sometimes the origins. So if yeah. it's Mark, I can. <laughs> depends. Can. For example, if you are a Buddhist monk, uh, you know, I think they wear a certain, you know, clothing. Mm -hmm. So it probably wouldn't be acceptable in that culture, or in certain religions. Uh, you know. So, but usually most or many cultures, it's acceptable. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, but I think there is a fine line when it comes to work, workplace, and uh, like Sebert mentioned, uh, usually all business, uh, you know, workplaces, you expected to wear to wear a uh, suit, trousers and a, and a shirt and a tie and all that. But I mean, in teaching, as a teacher, I can wear I can wear jeans if I like to. Um, you know, there's depends. Sometimes different schools might expect you to wear tie and trousers, but uh, as long as it's sort of um, semi, uh, you know, semi formal, you know, you can wear jeans with a nice shirt. You know, there are certain jeans like dark jeans you can wear, dark blue or black jeans you can wear with a nice. Uh, Collared shirt, which is acceptable. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But a few, I think, I've, I've very few cultures are against wearing jeans. All right, guys. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that was pretty straightforward. I don't think you have any complications with this. So let me get into. We're going to have to wrap it up, and I'm going to touch on some assessment. So I'll give you some words, guys, or even sentences, and I want you to respond to me, yeah? And give me the either the plural uh, of this word, or give me a sentence if I ask for a sentence. Okay, so let's start with Servet. Servet, I'll begin with you. Um, that's very easy. Man. What's the plural of man? Man. Yeah. How do you spell it? M E N. Excellent. Sheep. Sh sheep is sheep again. The same. Yes. So excellent. Yeah, stays the same. Um, okay, that's good. Now, uh huh. Okay, give me a, give me a sentence using sheep. And try to use uh, much, many, or a lot of. Seven. Mm, okay, a lot of sheep have been eaten by wolves in yes. Eastern Turkey, for example. Excellent. Yes, good question. Good question. I um, mean, good uh, sentence. Well done, Seven. That's quite easy. You understand this. Thank you. Uh, Cecilia. Yes. Cat. Cats. Cats. Excellent. Deer. Deer. Now, can you give me a question using deer? Um, and then you'll use a uh, quantifier. Have you watched the film Bambi the Deer when you were a little kid by Disney? Mm -hmm. Okay, but I didn't, I didn't notice a quantifier in there. Ah, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> I'm so curious. Uh, mm. uh, there had been uh, many versions of Bambi the Deer um, uh, by Walt Disney since 
uh, I was a girl. Many versions, many. Yeah, yeah, excellent. But uh -huh. what if you want to give me a question? Ah, question. Um, have you noticed that there have been many verses of Bambi the Deer from Walt Disney? Yes, that's since good. I was since I was a girl. Bueno, do, you don't know since I was <laughs> since you since you've been a boy since you've been a boy. Have you noticed? Yes, I've noticed. Okay. <laughs> That's good, that's good. Um, I was trying to steer you into saying something else, but you've uh, managed to scrape away. Okay, that's good. You've, you've, you've passed. Okay, thank you, Cecilia. Uh, Gany, here's one for you. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, book. What's plural book? Books. Yeah, easy. Uh -huh. uh, what about fruit? Fruit. So it stays the same? It's the same, but I can say fruits when I'm talking about different species. Yes, good, good. So, okay, can you give me a sentence using fruit and no, any, any of the quantifiers. Mm. Do you have any fruits um, from the market? Hmm. Okay, that's good. But I think fruit will be a, uh, it's a non-countable noun. So it, I think you'll have to stay fruit. Fruit, vegetable, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, but this is uh, all, like we said before, it can be like coffee also. Can I have two coffees or can I have two fruits? But actually, originally, it's a non countable noun. So, if you want to say that your sentence is perfect or your question is perfect, um, but you should keep the S out, yeah. So, say fruit. Would you like any fruit? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about? Can you give me a uh, polite, make a polite request? Polite request? <coughs> no question. Would you like to eat any sandwiches? Nice. Yes. Excellent. Very good. Would you like to eat any sandwiches? Thank you, Yanni. Uh, that's very good. And Isam? Sorry, uh, before I forgot, can you type me a request? Request, request. Uh, how to spell it? Yes. Okay, request, yeah. Thank you very much. I will translate. No okay. Uh, so I'll give you, let's see. All right, are you there, Isam? Yes. Can you use... Uh, Okay, what's the plural of vegetable? Vegetable is vegetable, is non countable. Well done, excellent. And can you make a sentence using vegetable and use a quantifier? So much, many, a I, lot of. I want to give. Um, I I want to give much vegetable from the market. Mm, I want to get much. I want vegetable. to get. Much vegetable from the market. Much? Is that do you think that's correct? Mm, I'm not sure. Uh, many? No, many is countable, but vegetable is non-countable. Yeah, I want to get much vegetable, but there's there are certain times where we can use the third option. Uh, What's the third? Uh, uh, yeah. I want to give. Uh, a lot so of vegetables yes. from the yeah. I want to get a lot of vegetable from the market. Mm. Um. See, let's have a look. Let me let me try give you another one because you might get confused. What mm -hmm. about um? 
One moment, I mute my my phone. One moment. Okay. Yes. Okay. Let's use water. Use water instead. Um. There is a lot. Um. Uh, there is a lot of water in my backyard. Excellent. Bye, Jenny. Uh, excellent. That's a very good, very good sentence. Uh, there's a lot of water in my backyard. Yes. yes. Perfect. That's what I want you to say. Excellent. Well done, Isan. Well done, Cecilia, and others who have left us. <laughs> You've done very well. Um, um, if there's a question you want to ask me, please do. If not, I release you out in the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for your participation, and I'll see you thank next time, you. guys. Yeah. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Have a lovely day, guys.